Hey guys, what's up? It's the Canadian Fire Gal. Thanks for joining me today. I wanted to chat about something that's known as the hedonic treadmill or hedonic adaptation. I think this phenomenon is very common in the fire community. I think a lot of people really struggle with this. Maybe not struggle with it, but definitely experience it as they're going through their journeys. So the definition of being on a hedonic treadmill or hedonic adaptation is essentially that no matter what circumstances you're in or how many things change in your life, you're always going to go back to kind of the same level of happiness. I think the big thing with being on a hedonic treadmill is buying into the idea that purchasing goods, materials, items that maybe aren't necessarily needs, but more you kind of keeping up with the Joneses. You might get a quick rush when you buy something or when you're planning to buy something, doing the research, and then you actually make the purchase. But I think with hedonic adaptation, it kind of means that when you are buying these things, you're getting a rush in the beginning, but eventually you're just going to return to that same level of happiness you were at before and it doesn't necessarily impact your overall happiness on the long term. So in this video, I wanted to give you guys a few tips on how to avoid getting onto that kind of treadmill, how to avoid getting into a place where you're just buying things and not really experiencing long-term results for increasing your happiness on your fire journey because being on the fire path means that most of your money or maybe your thoughts and ideas of what you want to do with your extra cash is to put that towards retirement in the future. But at the same time, you want to make sure that the things that you're spending money on now are definitely going to last you or they're definitely going to contribute to you actually being happier in the long run, not just in the short term. So the main point of this is to build the life that you want. Build the life you want to live now, but also work towards building that life in the future. I'll give you a few examples of this in my own life, and that includes buying a house in the future. Something else that's similar is saving up to live abroad for a little bit. Another thing is because I want to buy a house, I do have a few things in mind that I want to purchase once I get that house, like a hot tub. I mean, come on, can you live without that? So there are things that are bigger purchases in my life that I'm saving up towards. And I do sacrifice a little bit of the kind of get whatever I want at any point in time now so that I can afford those things later on down the road while also saving for my fire goals and retirement. I think another thing about getting off of the hedonic treadmill or avoiding that whole situation altogether is to really think about the people that you surround yourself with if they are making a little bit more money than you, if they're spending a lot more or even a little bit more money than you, you're going to sort of try to keep up with that and start spending out of your means and trying to find people that are just like-minded that also are working towards maybe an early retirement or that just don't throw all of their paychecks right into things that are just gonna give them satisfaction in the moment, but in the long run, aren't really going to change that level of happiness because as we know now, Hedonic adaptation says that there isn't really a whole lot that's going to change in your life that will change that level of happiness you experience on a daily basis. Another thing I would recommend is just avoiding social media. Me personally, I got rid of Facebook about two years ago and I got rid of Instagram maybe six months ago. I definitely get a rush out of buying something online, kind of like waiting for it to show up at the door and then I get that item and maybe I use it for a little bit, but normally I kind of forget about it and then move on to the next item. And without having social media, it's definitely helped me kind of rein that in and spend a little bit less on things that I really don't need and are just impulse purchases. I think another thing with avoiding uh, social media, it really pushes you to hang out with your friends in person more, although it's not really the best time with the whole COVID-19 thing going on, but it makes you focus on different ways of connecting and getting involved in your community. And I think that that's not only good for your self-esteem and your life and building something that you want to 
look forward to a community and a social circle that you're excited to retire to and be a part of, but obviously that's going to give you a little bit more fulfillment than making these impulse purchases. Shopping online can definitely become some kind of an addiction when it's giving you that high and then eventually you're gonna come back down to the, the same level of happiness that you were at before. And I don't think that this applies to absolutely everything. Like I mentioned earlier, there are purchases that I really wanna make in the future and I'm saving up for now that are things that I've wanted for a long time. I think you have to just think super critically about what you're putting your money into and what the payout's gonna be because if your happiness level isn't really going to change, material items just are never going to change that. It's, it's kind of just a common sense thing is that if you're not happy on the inside, you're not happy with yourself and you haven't really worked on your internal issues, then buying things is just never going to change that. When it comes to fire, I think this is super important. It's definitely a concept that plays into everybody's lives in purchasing things and saving up for a goal that's quite a ways down the road. And in saying that, I think you could almost apply hedonic adaptation and being on the treadmill to saving up for retirement because it can become an obsession for a lot of people. I know when I first started on the journey, I was incredibly obsessed with it. Like I never went out, I was saving every dollar, I push off, pushed off traveling, social events, buying things that I really needed. I think another really important thing, not just for the fire community, but for people in general, is to develop a growth mindset. And what that means is that you're always looking to become a better person, learn new things, try new things. You're always open to more possibilities instead of being really closed off. I think having a growth mindset is so good for you professionally as well. It definitely opens doors up for you to go to different companies, try something different, get those promotions, make more money. I think if you have a growth mindset as well that you're kind of getting away from looking externally for things to make you feel good and you work on yourself, maybe you develop a routine where you're working out on a regular basis or you're cooking your own meals, you're hanging out with your friends, you're connecting with your family, your community on a regular basis. And I think that it has been proven that doing those kinds of activities definitely increase or can slowly raise that bar up to a bit more of a sustainable happiness level than you would by just like buying things and whatever. I think one of the major lessons about hedonic adaptation and getting off that treadmill is to just be super present in your own life. I think a lot of people in the fire community already know that money doesn't buy you happiness in terms of buying material items, but spending money on things like experiences, at least for me, has always been worth that amount of money. I think there's also something to be said about the hedonic treadmill and hedonic adaptation that you could argue what is even the point of achieving fire in that case if you're gonna work a job that you really, really hate just to fire a few years early, if you're going to eventually return to that same level of happiness that you had while you were working, is there really a point to retiring early? And the way that I like to break that down or think about that is that when you retire, you get to live your life by your own means. So while you're working and you're going through kind of the day to day, you're super stressed, you're really not enjoying your life, you maybe spend a little bit more when you're not at work to kind of make up for that and do more things. You have kind of set that baseline while you're working. You will always settle back down to that baseline. And when you retire, I think it gives you kind of time to reset that baseline. There are discomforts that come with absolutely everything. Traveling, the travel part of traveling isn't very comfortable. If you're going to like renovate your house or you're going to start your own business, there are huge stresses that come with that kind of thing and big financial burdens as well. So I think when you retire, you're kind of resetting that baseline level of happiness in terms of what you can put up with. I hope this resonated a little bit with some of you. So leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. 
Thank you so much for joining me today and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.